How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you the run before I talk about the team so that you have an idea of what to expect. What you are seeing here is the B team. So we are going to be using the Honey Bee, also known as Bonnie, and she's extremely powerful for this stage. So this team is a perfect wombo combo. It doesn't ever fail. So the three units move in tandem all the time. So even if you do not nuke the boss down fast enough, you can be pretty sure that you will still be able to upkeep this wombo combo, no matter it's three, four or five more skill users down into the run. So for this setup, we are going turn 1, which means that we are throwing our skills out as soon as the battle starts. We are not going to be wasting too much time to charge up our skill, and that's for one very specific reason. Of course, we can totally opt for not using our skills at the start, but the thing is with Suzu, she's always going to go first, and because Suzu goes first, she actually charges up the skill gauge of unit number 1. And that's the problem that I face, because with that happening, we lose our wombo combo. Anyway, our skills are almost up, so let's take a look at our wombo combo again. So we first start off with a penetration, followed by Suzu, who brings our team into the boss and that's when Bonnie nukes from inside the boss dealing the maximum amount of damage possible by hitting all five of her projectiles so in that one instance we actually did 15 million damage it comes in two sets so the first set is when Bonnie starts to charge up her skill and the second set is when Bonnie actually releases the five projectiles so this team requires two different things. Number one, you need penetration in order to get inside the boss. And number two, you need a unit that can draw your entire team inside the boss. And in my case, I am using Shrumbo. But of course you can play with other units like Yuna who is just a 3 star thunder type. But you have to make sure that your skill gauges make sense in order for the wombo combo to continuously work throughout the run because you do not know who you're going to match up with during pups. So if your team is not future proof in that sense, you may face a lot of trouble in longer runs. Okay, so let's talk about the team. So one thing that many of you guys may realize is that I'm not using the Maltet, right? Even though I have a piercing unit, I'm still not using a Maltet. And the reason for this is very simple. Murakumo himself buffs Bonnie with 250% attack. That's a lot of attack. So I have way too much attack going on over here. And therefore, I need to balance it out with skill damage. So that's the only reason why I'm going with this uh, white tail stuff. What's it called? The Ancestral Scepter. So even in this team with only 3 thunder types, I am actually starting the fight with 150% skill damage. 90% comes from having 3 thunder types, and the other 60% that makes up 150 comes from me using 3 different skills when Bonnie uses her nuke. So on the second round that Bonnie uses her skill again, we should have 210% skill damage. So with the Ancestral Scepter, we can potentially reach 290% skill damage, but that is only for longer runs. So if your runs are about at least 1 minute and 30 seconds, that's about the time when you can expect your Ancestral Scepter to be kept out, and that's when your DPS also caps out. Okay, so as for the selection of the units that I'm using over here, uh, like I have Rams, I have Adil, I have Shrumbo, kind of weird, right? Let's go step by step. So the reason for Rams and Adil in one spot is because of the 420 skill gauge that you see over here. We need 420 skill gauge because we need this duo to go right before Suzu goes. And as you can see over here, Suzu has 430. So the synergy here is perfect. Unit 2 goes, gives me penetration, and of course, uh, Rams also gives me a little bit of skill damage over here. But more importantly, we need the penetration buff. And that's pretty much why Adil is here. And after the penetration buff goes, Shroombo actually pulls my entire team inside the boss because of the penetration. So that's the power of Shroombo or even like characters like Yuna. So let me just show you who Yuna is. Um, they, they, all, they all basically do the same thing, right? Okay, so this is Yuna. Uh, she's also another targeter over here. As you can see, targeters. Usually targeters uh, draw you inside the boss or rather draws you towards the boss but you need penetration in order to get inside. Yeah, so that's what she said. But another thing that maybe some of you guys might also realize, which is also a very important thing on, as to why this team even works in the first place, we are using gacha armaments. And to be precise, we are using the filibus, which is, yes, even though it's just a three-star armament, it's also pretty hard to get. It's very specific and it's also essential for this team to work. Although based on optimal calculation, your filibus doesn't need to be awakened for, this is considered awakened for, okay? Awakened 1 means no additional awakens. Your filibus can be awakened 3, which means that this can work with just 2 additional copies of filibus. That means, yeah, I just remove 1 star over here, and this would still work. So with the filibus on Suzu and the filibus as her weapon core, all thunder units get about 55% skill gauge at the start, minimally 55%. But for my case, it's slightly more than 55% because my filibus is upgraded a little bit. So it's about 60 plus percent, which is where this armament actually comes in perfectly. So the prismatic dual blades gives me another 40% skill gauge, which is just nice. So if your filibus is only awakened 3, which is 1 less than mine, the prismatic dual blades is actually not enough. You will need to opt for something with even more skill gauge. And by that, I mean another gacha armament. 
you can use either the treaties, right, which is a four star book over here, the treaties on war, or you can also use the book of lies. And also we are using a time limited armament over here as the weapon core. So this is the Shadow Flash Sword. If you have not seen this, this is from one of the previous events, one of the Thunder D Dragon events. It gives me an additional 15% skill gauge. So coupled with the fact that I have these two filibus over here, we will start off with at least 70% skill gauge over here. And with Suzu using her skill, we will then push Bonnie to 100% skill gauge. And that's why at the start you see Rams going first because Rams already has 100% skill gauge, followed by Suzu and then followed by Bonnie. And this actually continues in the same order down, like no matter how many times you're gonna use your skill, right? Okay, but honestly, it's the best policy. There are a few things that you should take note of when using this team. So number one, this team is highly reliant on downing the boss because number one, Murakumo does extra damage to downed enemies and Bonnie's leader buff also grants an additional 15% damage onto downed or broken enemies. So if let's say your synergy is completely off, if you're running a bunch of pups who do not know when to use their skills, right, then the likelihood of you actually doing very little mini skill damage is, a, is very high. Sometimes when you fully charge up all your skill damage like from your ancestral scepter and from using ram skill a few times, you may only see numbers like 5 or 6 million and I'm talking about the total DPS of using one skill. So it's nowhere near like doing 15 or 16 million damage in one go. And you may be asking why didn't I use the Mino, right? So Mino doesn't really work with penetration because Mino Bonnie with penetration puts you inside the boss and then Mino actually takes you out of the boss. So Mino works with Bonnie only if you're running without penetration. And another reason why I don't want to use Mino is because you're going to be reliant on your allies to not heal you but sometimes they're going to run units like Cagliostro who heals everyone, every single party. And also because we're not running healers or the sword, it's extremely risky and we may potentially lose a few runs. So I don't really want to YOLO that much and therefore I think the BCOM really works well for me. So that's my team for the Hermit King EX. Let me know down in the comments what kind of teams you are running with. Are you using the Obama comp? Are you running with Metis? Or are you going old school Rams nuke? I will say that this boss is slightly more difficult, wherein you require very specific units or specific armaments. Otherwise, the difference between your run times is extremely huge. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe for more World Flipper content. And this has been free to play, by the way. And as always, I will see you in the next video.